Hello, my name is Moving Cat and welcome to a very interesting video. In this video, I will be asking ChatGPT a bunch of questions about Forge of Vampires and hopefully we will get some interesting answers in return. Now, I am a bit skeptical <laughs> in case you don't know. Uh, ChatGPT allows you to ask questions and it will answer you back uh, and usually it does this very well. That's thanks to an uh, absolutely enormous uh, data set that they have used to train the model, uh, the natural language processing model that the tool is based on. Uh, but I don't know how extensive that knowledge extends to Forge of Empires. Uh, I do believe it will have some basic knowledge about the game uh, based on articles and so on that it has been fed. Uh, but I don't think it will be a lot, so... I think we will get some, let's say, interesting answers that are probably not that correct. Uh, now, one cool thing about ChatGPT is that it will answer uh, confidently even if it is not correct. So even if it's saying something completely random, something that doesn't make sense at all, it will do so confidently. And if you don't know anything about the game, it might sound plausible. But if you do know about the game, it will probably sound ridiculous. And so hopefully we will get some very fun questions or answers to our questions. Another cool thing about ChatGPT is that it remembers the previous conversation you have had. So you can ask for follow-up questions and stuff like that. Now, with some help from my Discord server, I have compiled a bunch of questions that I will be feeding it. But I can also do some on-the-spot follow-up questions uh, if we get some interesting answers from it. So let's start with a very simple one. Hey ChatGPT, I have some questions regarding the game for Vampires. Are you able to help me with that? And this one, it'll have some, I think, very, uh, yeah, very standard question uh, answer. Yes, I'd be happy to help you with any questions you have about Forge Vampires. What would you like to know? All right, that's good to know at least. And I think, first of all, let's see if it uh, knows anything about Fort Vampires and what it is about. Fort Vampires is a browser-based strategy game developed by Inno Games. There we go. In the game, players build their own city and manage its development through several historical eras, from the Stone Age to the Modern Age. Ooh, that's quite some old uh, information there. Uh, players can research new technologies, build structures, and interact with other players through trading and warfare. The ultimate goal of the game is to build a thriving civilization and become the strongest empire. So, yeah, more or less correct, except for quite outdated last age. Uh, so yeah, let's ask it uh, a very, uh, I think, challenging question. Uh, now here, I have two abbreviations, so I wonder how it will handle those. Uh, perhaps I will move on to not use abbreviations in the future, but it might lead to some interesting answers as well. So let's see. How high attack boost do you need in EMA? In Fort Vampires, the EMA stands for the Early Middle Ages, nice! Which is one of the historical eras in the game. The exact amount of attack boost you need to auto-fight GE level 4 in EMA depends on several factors, including the strength of your army and the defensive capabilities of your opponent's army. Alright, as a general rule, it is recommended to have a strong army and high attack boosts when facing a GE level 4 opponent in EMA. So it's not getting the... Uh, wording completely correct there, opponent, uh, but sort of. Uh, some players suggest having attack boost in the range of 25% to 50% or higher to successfully auto-fight GE level 4. However, it's important to remember that these are just rough estimates and the actual amount of attack boost required can vary depending on the specific situation. So what do you guys think about that suggestion? 25 to 50% attack boost? Do you think that is enough? Um, I don't know, that sounds a little bit low to me. So let's see. Uh, let's uh, see if it knows anything about which units to use for fighting. And it should hopefully remember that we are in the early Middle Ages, so let's see if it does. It needs some time to think, I see. The units you should use in fighting in Forge Vampires can depend on various factors, such as the era you are in, alright your opponent's army and your own army composition. However, here are some general tips to consider. Balance. It's important to have a balanced army that includes a mix of different unit types, such as infantry, archers, and cavalry. 
this will help you to effectively deal with different types of enemy units. Well, I'll let you be the judge of that. Uh, era appropriate, make sure to use units that are appropriate for the era you are in. Using older era units against modern era, ooh, the units is likely to result in defeat. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if it's using modern hair because it knows that's uh, an age hair, or if it's just using it as a term for kind of higher era. It's a little bit confused there. A weakness exploitation. Try to use units that exploit the weakness of your opponent's army. For example, if your opponent has a lot of archers, use units that have a high defense against ranged attacks. That's not too bad of a tip, at least early on. Special abilities. Ooh, nice. Take advantage of special abilities of your unit. Some units have abilities that can help turn the tide of battle in your favor, such as increased attack or increased defense. Um, kind of correct. Although, increased attack and defense wouldn't really be special abilities. That would just be the stats of the unit. Uh, but yeah, it's nice that it at least knows there's a thing that, uh, that's called special abilities. Now, that can help turn the tide of battle in your favor. I feel like that's something I've read in some sort of promotional uh, prom promotional material or something. Uh, I don't know, perhaps, perhaps not. And ultimately, the best unit to use in battle depends on the specific situation and your individual playstyle. Experiment with different unit combinations and find what works best for you. All right, let's see if we can get some more specific recommendations. You recommend G4 in EMA. Let's see if it understands that. In the early Middle Ages, Aero Photo Vampires were fighting against level 4 Great Building. That's not correct. Uh, it's. Uh, oh, it's just gonna spit in the next or the same thing. Uh, oh, not quite. So, Aero Appropriate, that's probably the same thing. Yeah, that's the same thing. But high rage or high, high attack boost. It's important to have high attack boost to increase the strength of your army. Aim for at least 25 to 50% or higher attack boost. All right. And these other ones are... Okay, it's not quite what I wanted. Do you have any specific recommendations? Let's see if it has any specific ones. In the early Middle Ages, when fighting against the blah blah blah. So, Pikeman. The Pikeman is a strong infantry unit that has high defense against cavalry and a moderate attack. Crossbowman. The crossbowman is a ranged unit that has high attack and moderate defense. Knight. The knight is a strong cavalry unit that has a high attack and moderate defense. And catapult. The catapult is a siege unit that has a high attack against buildings and moderate defense. Now, pikeman. That doesn't sound familiar to me. Uh, I don't think it's called uh, pikeman. Is it? Perhaps it is. Let me just do a quick search. Pikeman Forge of Empires. Okay, so it's probably Imperial Guard it's thinking about. But that's late Middle Ages. Because that is uh, built in the Pike Square, or unlocked by the Pike Square technology. So I don't know if there is a Pikeman in the game. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, infantry unit, I suppose. Uh, so we don't have, I guess, I'm guessing then this is the heavy unit, uh, ranged, uh, fast, and artillery, but we don't have the light unit, so that's interesting. Now, these units can be combined with others to form a balanced army and take advantage of their strengths and abilities. Additionally, it's important to have a high attack boost to increase the strength of your army. Again, aim for at least 25 to 50%. That's definitely not enough. Uh, keep in mind that these are just examples and the actual units are, yeah. And it does, does also often do this where it kind of says, this is a recommendation, but keep in mind it might not only be that case and so on and so on. Uh, but yeah, so I'm not sure if you're going to get any more specific answers than this. So, I don't know. <laughs> not sure how helpful this would be, but it's a start, I suppose. Now let's see if it knows anything about rogues. Uh, because, yeah, that's something it hasn't recommended. So let's see if it recommends using rogues as well. Needs a bit of time to think, I see. In Forge Vampires, rogues can be a useful unit to have in your army, especially when fighting against a level 4 great building in the early Middle Ages. 
Uh, rogues have the following strength, high defense. Uh, rogues have a high defense against rage attacks, making it an excellent choice against archers. Uh, not really. Stealth. Rogues have a, the stealth ability, which allows them to dodge enemy attacks. This makes them difficult to hit and can help with them survive longer in battles. Mm. <laughs> Fail number two. Bonus against great buildings. Rogues also have a bonus against great buildings, making them more effective when attacking healed expeditions. Um, okay. If these strengths make rogues a valuable addition to your army, especially when used in conjunction with other units that complete their abilities. However, keep in mind that rogues are not the best choice for every battle, as their effectiveness can depend on this specific situation and the composition of your opponent's army. Experiment with different unit combinations and find what works best for you. So, this I would uh, say is the, well, both the wor worst and best answer so far. Definitely the funniest answer so far. Uh, but yeah, that didn't make a lot of sense at all. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, I d I've, yeah, this is exactly what I was hoping for when making this a video. Um, now let's see if we can get some follow-up for this. Uh, which enemy units are the rogues best against? Let's do, do, do fix that. Let's see if it uh, can <laughs> tell us anything about that. Rogues are best against enemy units that are primarily ranged units, such as archers, as they have a high defense against a ranged attack. Not, <laughs> not no. Uh, additionally, rogues have the stealth ability. Uh, again, no. Uh, when using rogues, it's important to keep in mind that they may not be effective against all. Well, that's probably the same <laughs> same disclaimer here. All right, um, now let's see if it uh, knows what units you can combine the rogues with. It's probably just going to say something generic about combining units for balance or something like that, I imagine. Uh, the units that you should use together with rogues depend on the specific situation. Of course it does. Uh, here are some general tips. Oh, melee units. To support your rogues, you may want to use melee units such as infantry or cavalry that can absorb enemy attacks and protect your rogues. Well, it's uh, pretty much the exact opposite. <laughs> you use rogues to protect your other units. Uh, rage units. To take advantage of the enemy's weaknesses, you may want to use rage units such as crossbowmen or catapults. Eh, almost. That can attack from distance and keep the enemy at bay. All right. Siege units. Siege units. Okay, so here it has pulled another random name or random word from the game and it's probably pulled it a uh, place where it doesn't belong. Uh, to attack enemy buildings or structures, you may want to use siege units such as catapults that have a high attack against the buildings. <laughs> not really. Uh, not really at all. Um, but yeah, interesting answer. Um, these are just some examples, and yeah, the random disclaimer. All right, um, didn't uh, that? Uh, yeah, doesn't really help at all. But uh, let's move on, I suppose. Um, now I had prepared these questions, that hoping it would give a bit more specific answers. But uh, let's see if it can. The amount of attrition that you can achieve in a great building battle in Fall of Empires uh, depends on many factors. Blah blah blah. Your attack boost, units you use, composition of opponent. It's not possible to determine a specific attrition rate without knowing these factors. However, having a high attack boost is generally considered beneficial. And then again, 25 to 50%. In terms of units, it's best to have a balanced army that includes a mix of different unit types to be prepared for different enemy units. Ultimately, the best way to determine your attrition rate is to experiment with different units the combinations and attack boost and find what works best for you. So that didn't really answer the question at all. Let's see if it knows uh, a bit more about uh, GPG. Because yeah, it didn't uh, exactly know what it stood for. So let's see if, uh, let's give it another go, <laughs> another attempt. GPT stands for Great Building Game, alright, <laughs> not really. A Great Building Game is a feature in the game where players can compete against each other to see who can gain the most points in a set amount of time. 
Points are earned by attacking and capturing a great building controlled by another player. Almost, if you swap out great building with sectors. In a great building game, players form alliances and work together to attack a common enemy, usually a great building controlled by another player. The goal is to earn as many points as possible by capturing the building and holding it for as long as possible. The player with the most points at the end of the game wins. Uh, so it doesn't look like it understands the guild aspect of the game, or knows about it. Uh, G GPGs are a great way to earn rewards, including in-game resources, coins and medals. Oh, that's correct. Uh, they also offer a way to, for players to compete against each other and test their army's strength. Uh, not directly against each other, but uh, definitely test their army's strength. Additionally, participating in GPGs can be a good way to build relationships and strengthen alliances with other players. Well, almost. Uh, let's see if it knows anything about guilds. Uh, let's see if we can... Let's see if we can uh, get it to... Uh, what are these... Alliances you speak of? Let's see if we can get to guild without me mentioning guild. An alliance of other members is a group of players who have joined together to cooperate and support each other in the game. Players can form alliances with other players to help with, out with other tasks, such as resource sharing. Uh, kind of. Defense against enemy attacks. Not really. And cooperate in great building games. Uh, alliance can also serve as a way for players to socialize and build relationships with others who share similar interests. Uh, players can chat with each other, share tips and strategies, and work together to achieve common goals. Joining an alliance can be a great way to enhance your Forge Vampire experience, as it provides an opportunity to connect with other players to build and build a supportive community. If you're interested in joining an alliance, you can look for one in the game's alliance search feature, or you can join an existing alliance that has been recommended to you by other players. Interesting! Uh, so. It seems like it kind of knows what it is, but uh, has a has a wrong word for it. Uh, let's see if we can uh, try another way of getting it to get to. Um, hmm. Ooh. Uh, let's see. Is there another word for it? Let's see if we can get to guild now. Guilds! Okay, there we go. A guild is a group of players who have joined together. And it's probably just going to say the same thing here. But there we go, okay. It got there in the end. So now we have guilds. That's nice. All right. Uh, now I do have a question. another question about guilds a, bit, a little bit later on in my <laughs> the questions I prepared. So let's just do that now. How should I choose a guild to join? Or do you recommend starting my own? Let's see what it says. Choosing a guild to join in Forge Vampire is a personal decision that depends on your playstyle and goals in the game. Here are a few things ooh, to consider when choosing a guild or deciding to start your own. Goals and playstyle. Look for a guild that aligns with your goals and playstyle. For example, if you are a more casual player, you may want to join a guild that has a relaxed schedule and doesn't require daily participation. If you're a more competitive player, you may want to join a guild that focuses on, again, great building games and winning battles. That's not a bad tip, uh, with the exception of the, well, continuation of the great building game thingy. Uh, communication. Consider how the gu guild communicates and if it fits your preferred method of communication. Some guilds use in-game chat, while others use external tools such as Discord or Facebook. Interesting. Uh, I do use Discord uh, with one guild that I well, was in, I just left recently. Uh, don't think it's that common, but uh, definitely, yeah, nice to know. Activity level. Look for a guild that is active and has a strong sense of community. This can be a great way to stay motivated and get the most out of the game. I do agree with that. Requirements. Some guilds have requirements such as minimum player level. Um, player level isn't really a thing. Uh, daily participation or specific time zones. Make sure you understand and are comfortable with these requirements before joining a guild. Yeah, sure. I agree with the general gist of that. 
Starting your own guild can be a great way to build your own community and play the game the way you want. However, starting a guild can also be a lot of work, as you'll need to recruit members, establish rules and guidelines, and manage the day-to-day -day operation of the guild. Well, that's a nice uh, summation of it. Ultimately, the best way to choose a guild is to try out a few. <laughs> it always goes back to that. Try out a few things to see what fits. I guess it's not the worst thing, the worst tip, but yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, let's uh, move on. Uh, I'll go back to the list I had. Uh, 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 uh. Should I increase attack or defense boost for easier fighting? Let's see what it answers there. Needs a bit of time to think. A bit, still a bit more time to think. Ooh, okay, so this was apparently a tough question. Or perhaps it's just the servers that are busy with other people as well. Still thinking. Oh, there we go. Increasing both attack and defense boost can be useful for easier fighting. This allows you to deal more damage to your enemies while also reducing the damage you take. That's correct. That being said, the right balance between attack and defense boost depends on your playstyle and goals in the game. If you prefer to be more aggressive and focus on attacking other players, then you may want to prioritize increasing your attack boost. On the other hand, if you prefer to focus on defending your city and protecting your resources, then you may want to prioritize increasing your defense boost. Okay, so here has kind of uh, not understood fully. Uh, that uh, I, I'm referring to uh, attack for attacking army, uh, but perhaps if I uh, specify that, um, I'm specifically, oh, that's not correct, uh, Kali referring to attack and defense boost for my attacking army. Which should I increase first? Let's try that. Because it probably doesn't know that there are kind of attack and defense boosts for both attack, uh, your attacking army and your city defense. That those are two different things. Probably just doesn't know that. So yeah, let's see if uh, if we can get some answer or more specific answer this time. And yeah, it's uh, starting to slow down. Okay, there we go. When referring to attack and defense boost for attacking army, it depends on your playstyle and goals. Okay. If you are more aggressive and deal more damage to your enemies, then you may want to prioritize increasing your attack boost. And minimize losses, then you may want to prioritize increasing your defense boost. Okay, now it's correct. It's worth noting that different units have different strengths and weaknesses. And you may want to consider uh, creating a balanced army. That's not really what I asked, all right. And again, the balanced army thing, which is not correct. Uh, ultimately, the best approach is to experiment. Okay, so I would class that as a fail. Didn't really, wasn't really able to uh, to answer there. Um, I think I'll move on to another line of questioning. Will it be easier for me if I move up to another age? Let's see if it knows that. Needs to think. Needs to think. So yeah. So you can kind of see the mix here. Uh, it's very conf confident in all the answers there. Uh, even when it's wrong. So the balanced army thing, for example. It has said that a lot of times. But it also has a lot of these disclaimers. Uh, kind of, yeah. <laughs> disclaimers. Uh, moving up to a higher age in Forge of Empires can make the game easier in some ways, as you'll have access to more advanced technologies and units. However, advancing to a higher age also means that you'll face more challenging opponents and tougher battles, so it's not a guarantee that the game will be easier overall. Yeah, sure, that's correct. Uh, another as a factor here would be the resources, but uh, in terms of the army uh, fighting uh, part, that's definitely correct. Advancements to a higher age can bring new opportunities and challenges, so it's important to consider your goals and playstyle before making the move. Sure. For example, if you prefer a more relaxed pace and don't mind spending more time in a lower age, then you may want to stay in your current age. On the other hand, if you're looking for a more challenging experience and want to progress quickly, then moving up to a higher age may be the right choice for you. I agree with that. 
And then ultimately a decision with the move up right is personal one that depends on your goal to play style. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, probably one of the better answers, uh, which might have something to do with that. It's quite a, a non-specific answer. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, next one. When do you recommend moving up to the next stage? I um, have a feeling it's just going to sp uh, spit out the same answer, uh, worded a little bit differently. So let's see if we can get something a bit more specific. Or perhaps, uh, perhaps the next one will be uh, I have, let's say, uh, am I ready to move up to HMA? Let's ask that, ne that next time. Uh, the timing of one to move up to the next age is a personal decision, of course it is. Um, let's see what the guidelines. You have completed all available main quests in your current age. Moving up to the next age will unlock new main quests and challenges. Sure, which can provide a fresh and exciting experience. Sure, don't disagree with that. Uh, you have a strong and balanced army. A strong and balanced army is crucial for success in battles and can be faced the challenges of the next age. Again, the balanced. I definitely agree with strong, but they're not balanced. You have a solid economy, sure. A strong economy is essential for supporting your army and progressing in the game. So I doesn't fully understand how the resources work in the game, uh, because you're not really supporting your army or anything like that. Uh, make sure you have a steady income and enough resources to upgrade your buildings and units. Yeah, sure. Although you don't really upgrade units directly through resources that way. Uh, but yeah, sure. Uh, you created the key research. Research is crucial part of Forge Vampires. And it's important to complete key research projects in your current age before moving up to the next stage. So I kind of understand that there is a research thing, technology thing. But it doesn't fully grasp how it works. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's answer this specific question. Let's see if it has any, <laughs> any, you know, specific answers this time. It probably will, I think. Thinking, thinking. Oh, having 300-300 attack boost in early middle ages is a good start. But it's not the only factor to consider when deciding if you're ready to move up to high middle ages. Here are some additional factors to consider. Oh, that's interesting. Army strength. In addition to attack boost, it's important to have a strong and balanced army with a mix of different units. Uh, <laughs> not really. So again, again, it's uh, you know spitting out the same thing. Economy research. That's probably a copy of the of this. Buildings, make sure you have all the necessary buildings and upgrades in place, as well as a well-planned city layout. Ooh, perhaps it's time to answer a few questions about city layout. I do have some questions about it, so perhaps I'll wait a little bit. Um, HMA will bring new quests and challenges, so it's important to be prepared for these challenges. All right, so didn't really feel like an answer. I was <laughs> kind of saying... It's not the only thing to think about, but uh, that is generally true. It's not the only thing you need to focus on. Uh, let's try another way. Will that uh, be enough to fight in HMA? Let's try that. <laughs> let's see if it can answer anything specific now, or if it's just going <laughs> to do some more general... Disclaimer stuff. Mm -mm -mm. While it's thinking, let me find my next question. Again, as I mentioned, I have a bunch of questions that I've prepared. Uh, anyways, uh, having uh, is, can be a good start, but it's not the only factor. All right, so it's just going to repeat the previous one. Okay, it seems like we have come to a standstill, so I'll move on, I guess. Um, let's see. Ah! Okay, let's move on to great buildings, and let's see if it... Uh, let's just stop that. Now that I've moved up to HMA, which great buildings should I focus on? Let's see if it has any recommendations here. I think perhaps next one, can you list the top... Uh, let's do five 
And let's do the full full thing, uh, great buildings. But let's see if it has any recommendations before. All right, in higher bit latest, there are several great buildings you can focus on uh, building. And the best one for you will depend, <laughs> of course it will depend. Ooh, okay, Temple of Relics. The Temple of Relics provides strong bonuses to your culture and military production. Uh, no, but okay. Make it a great choice for players who want to grow their culture. An army quickly. Colosseum. The Colosseum is a popular is popular among players who want to focus on military production, as it produces strong bonuses to your army's strength and training speed. Not at all. Academy of Sciences. That sounds like uh, that's a cool name actually. Uh, the Academy of Sciences is a great choice for players who want to focus on research, as it provides bonuses to research speed and efficiency. No. Uh, opera House, that's not a cool one. The Opera House is popular among players who want to focus on culture, as it provides strong bonuses to cultural production and happiness. <laughs> and then Bank of the Renaissance. The Bank of the Renaissance is a good choice for players who want to focus on their economy. So yeah, again, kind of see the same things. The economy is mentioned. Uh, research. Doesn't really have a full, full grasp, but... Uh, Let's see if it spits out some different buildings, or just the same ones there. It's probably going to do the same ones, I think. But we can uh, do... Uh, uh, can you name all the great buildings? Let's just capitalize that. Uh, uh, uh. Let's do that after one. It's difficult to say which are the top, uh, best top five. Uh, here are five deepest that are generally considered to be among the strongest. Is that the... Okay, not the same. But Colosseum, it's probably going to yeah, do the same ones, I think. So, Academy of Sciences... Ooh! No, it's the same one. Okay, so I'll just stop that. Uh, let's... Uh, ooh! Ah, uh, okay. I think I might have used all my <laughs> free questions for now. So I guess we'll do a break here, and uh, I guess we'll stop here for now. Uh, it, it's been a half an hour now, so I think it's a natural point to stop. Now, if you found this interesting, uh, as I've said, I do have a bunch of questions. I do have more. So would you like to see me continue this another day? Uh, I definitely had a lot of fun. It uh, had some interesting questions uh, or answers here with the great buildings. It did know some of them. Although, yeah, didn't really get it the right, what they, they provide. It knows uh, some things about the game, some words, but other things it gets completely wrong, like uh, uh, the favorite uh, great building games. <laughs> that, uh, that'll be fun. It did get to guilds eventually, so that's nice. Uh, what was the other one? Oh yeah, of course. 25 to 50% are higher attack boosts, which, uh, well, I think even back when Gil Expression Level 4 was first introduced, that was way below what was uh, required, so, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right, it didn't, I don't think it ever mentioned, uh, yeah, Great Building, abbreviated to GE. It's kind of in, uh, that doesn't really match up. So yeah, it never got to Guild Expedition, so perhaps I should have used the full name. Perhaps that would be helpful. Uh, what was the other one? I do remember there was a very uh, interesting answer. Okay. But yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that's, uh, yeah, that's it for this video, I think. Let me know what you think, and let me know if you want more of this. Now, before I end the video, let me thank my Patreons for their support. I would like to thank Homestar, for the effect, Lorden, Rockenhoven, Kim Cayley, Rolf the Eighth, PQ the Goat, Dan Simulat, JT, Chanti, Merrick B, Hugo Kant von Count, Jan Fadigsen, Drew the Generous, Filda, Susan Weiss, Rocco, Mörfren Embris, Hanklare Klaber, Mattia, Offshore the Assessed, Raph, Adarel, Mike, Wolfboy, Atomic, Ruth, Flavius Belisarius, and Karen. Thanks a lot for your support, thanks for watching, take care, and I will see you in the future.